Hey guys, here at the Coliseum. On today's video, we're actually not gonna be talking about the Coliseum. I wanna share with you some amazing Roman ruins in and near Rome where you can experience the grandeur of ancient Rome, the architecture, the art, but without those lines and crowds at the Colosseum. This is a great thing to do for those of you who are visiting Rome for the second time or you have a little extra time in Rome than the typical two and a half to three days. I've got a lot of things in store for you, so let's get into it. Well, it's been said, and I must agree, Rome is an open air museum. Frankly, you can see this for yourself if you just walk around Rome. I mean, here by the Colosseum, we have the Arch of Constantine right there. If you walk up and down the Via dei Fori Imperiali, which is the road of the Imperial Forums, or Fora, which is the road that leads to the Colosseum, it's just full of ancient Roman ruins. Uh, walking around the center, you're going to come upon the Pantheon. There are ruins all around us, and frankly, uh, this video would be hours long <laughs> if I went over all of them. So I'm going to give you my top 10 favorite Roman ruins in and near Rome that you can easily visit and enjoy some ancient Rome without the crowds. The first Roman ruin that I want to tell you about is right near the Colosseum. It's just a couple of blocks from here. It's the Baths of Caracalla. You probably know the ancient Romans loved to enjoy their public baths and Caracalla was an emperor in the early third century who built an incredible, enormous bath complex, which you can visit today. I mean, they were fairly well plundered <laughs> for the art inside. You've got the sculptures that the Farnese family took and you can see a lot of those in the Archaeological Museum in Naples. I did a video for you guys about that. You can check that out. Also, if you've ever visited the church of Santa Maria in Trastevere, the columns in the central nave of that church are said to be from the Baths of Caracalla. And if you visit uh, Piazza Farnese, which is where the Palazzo Farnese is, another video, uh, you will see the giant bathtub fountains there that also came from the Baths of Caracalla. Despite all this, the structure that you can visit today is really amazing. When you go inside, you can see intact mosaics, frescoes. A lot of the architectural structures are still standing. These are the original rooms of this bathhouse, which was really, really complex. And it's an easy site to visit. You can visit it in about an hour. You can go on your own. They also have a really good audio guide. They even have a virtual reality guide, which is quite cool. It allows you to see what the baths once looked like. You might also know if you're here in July, the Rome Opera House puts on operas inside the Baths of Caracalla. It's pretty amazing. They also do um, sometimes ballet and other concerts there as well. It is really a wonderful space to enjoy a show like that. But just as a ruin in and of themselves, they are really one of the best places to see, like I said, the grandeur, the architecture of ancient Rome without any crowds. I, I've never run into more than maybe 20 people in there. You can go up and walk in without uh, booking ahead. Of course you have to pay, but you do not have to book ahead and you do not have to take a tour if you don't want to. Speaking of baths, so we're going to talk about the second ancient Roman ruin that you can visit here in Rome, the Baths of Diocletian. Diocletian was an emperor a little bit later than Caracalla. His baths were much bigger than Caracalla's baths, but unfortunately they are much less well preserved. To visit the Baths of Diocletian, you can actually do this in one of two ways. The first way is free. You can go inside the church of Santa Maria degli Angeli dei Martiri, which is Saint Mary of the Angels and the Martyrs, and you can see this incredible structure that uh, was once part of the Diocletian Baths and today is a basilica. As a bonus, look up at the ceiling because that vaulted ceiling was designed by Michelangelo when he was 88 years old. It was the last thing he did before he died. The other way to visit the Baths of Diocletian is to go inside the museum. And this is an incredible visit because you actually get to see the museum itself, which is arguably one of the best collections of art and artifacts from ancient Rome, along with, of course, the Capitoli Museums. Included in your ticket, you also get to visit the structures of the Baths of Diocletian. And these are enormous, just really, awesome in the literal uh, use of the word awe. They are awesome structures that really give you a sense of the enormity of the structures that the ancient Romans were capable of building. All right, number three, Ostia Antica. I have done a video for you guys about this. I also have a page on the website. Absolutely include Ostia Antica on your visit if you can. 
sometimes I like to call it uh, Pompeii without the drama <laughs> because Ostia is basically an ancient Roman city half an hour outside of Rome that simply fell into disuse. So it was not destroyed by something like an earthquake or a volcano, it just sort of disintegrated Although it didn't really disintegrate that much, it is in incredible shape. So if you go out to Ostiantica and you visit it and you walk around, you really feel like you are walking in an ancient Roman city. It's truly amazing. I mean, you will see temples, you'll see gymnasiums, you'll see mosaics, uh, latrines. Um, it's just, it is an incredibly complex place to visit, but it's really easy to get to from Rome. It's only half an hour on a one euro 50 cent metro ticket and you can just go out there and you definitely will find yourself in a crowd free or mostly crowd free uh, place to really really enjoy and immerse yourself in ancient Rome. Hey guys if you're enjoying this video if you enjoy my videos would you please go ahead and hit that like button below apparently it really helps with the algorithm and I would really appreciate it thank you so much. All right, the next place I wanna tell you about is called the Roman Houses at Celio. So Celio is actually where I am standing. It is one of the seven hills of Rome. It's the Celian Hill. And really just uh, not far from here, maybe a five minute walk from where I am standing, so very close to the Colosseum, is this sort of little known place that you can visit. It's kind of underground, but it's not claustrophobic, where they found an entire ancient Roman neighborhood. This is actually underneath the church of Santi Giovanni Paolo, which is a church name for Saints John and Paul, not the famous John and Paul, but two Roman soldiers who were martyred and buried underneath this church. I really love this visit because many people don't know about it. You go inside, you feel like you have just sort of entered into this little secret place. The frescoes are amazing. They are so intact. There is a nymphaeum under there, which means an ornate or decorative garden with a fountain. Uh, teeny tiny mosaics at the back of this site and remember you're still kind of underground you will come upon this little but incredibly well curated museum it is just wonderful it has art and artifacts and mosaics and coins from around this ancient Roman ruin that they excavated and it is just a joy to visit it's a wonderful addition to this site Certainly one of the best places where you can experience a lot of ancient Roman stuff is to go out onto the Appia Antica, the Appian Way. This was one of the ancient Roman roads leading outside of Rome. And it is kind of famous for where the catacombs are and there are some other ruins out there, but there is an incredible ruin that you should really visit if you want to experience this ancient Roman grandeur that we're talking about. And that ruin is called the Villa dei Quintilli. This is a villa named for uh, family by that name and it is again incredibly intact considering how old it is you will see little mosaics you'll see beautiful marble structures and floors it's a vast ruin you can easily walk around on your own i have visited it with uh, tour guides which i definitely appreciate because it's hard to know what you're looking at but you can easily go on your own this is a wonderful ruin if you want to experience ancient rome with i would have to say literally no crowds at all the next Roman ruin I want to tell you about is Hadrian's Mausoleum. Hadrian was an emperor in the second century. You probably know by now uh, he was one of the people responsible for designing the Pantheon that you see today, among other things. His mausoleum is today Castel Sant'Angelo. Now I know I said I was not including the Pantheon because it's a little bit of a given and it's a little well known. I don't think the Castel Sant'Angelo is as well known as the Pantheon. However, it is one of my favorite buildings in Rome, especially for understanding Rome's history through its architecture. Like the Pantheon, Castel Sant'Angelo will have a few more crowds and maybe some lines that you're not gonna find at some of the other ruins that I talked about, so it's not a perfect example of what I was trying to share with you, but I do think it is often overlooked. People don't realize what an amazing monument this is, and it is a great way to experience ancient Rome. Castel Sant'Angelo started as Hadrian's mausoleum. He modeled it after Augustus's mausoleum and it started out as a mausoleum, but it later became a fortress. Uh, then it became a papal party palace, uh, among other things, <laughs> a prison, the site of gruesome executions. And today it is a state museum. It's very easy to visit. And one of the reasons that people love visiting this monument is because when you get to the top there are just amazing views so there's also a cafe up there with wonderful views of the basilica of saint peter's 
But if you are trying to experience ancient Rome, Castel Sant'Angelo really should be on your list. And this brings me to the next Roman ruin that I want to tell you about, which is the Mausoleum of Augustus. I feel that this is an important ruin for me to tell you about. It may not be something you will easily want to put on your list or even can easily put on your list. At the time I'm making this video, the mausoleum is still being restored. They have been restoring this monument for actually decades and they did finally open it up briefly and I went and did a video about it, but they are still really restoring it and it's gonna be an incredible museum. It's gonna be absolutely stunning. So I'm including that in my list because when you visit Augustus's mausoleum, you really are going back to sort of square one, the beginning of the Roman Empire. And while you're at it, you might as well visit also the Arapashis, which is the museum just next door, the Altar of Peace, which of course was done under Augustus. This is all part of this complex that is dedicated to Rome's first emperor. The next Roman ruin that I want to tell you about where you can experience ancient Rome without any crowds is Trajan's Market. So Trajan was emperor and he was emperor of Rome at its basically its largest expansion. So there is a huge forum dedicated to him along the Via dei Fori Imperiali. There's a big column uh, that basically outlines some of his exploits, his victory over Dasha, which is today Romania. But Trajan's Market is a ruin. It's a site you can visit in and of itself and it is absolutely wonderful. It basically was Rome's first shopping mall. There is almost never anybody in this site. It's incredible. You can really see all the stalls in here. You can see uh, the corridors, little tiny mosaics, frescoes. You can actually walk, go out and walk on the floor of this mall. You're walking on Trajan's Market on ancient Roman floors. It's just outstanding. And also as a bonus from this monument, you have wonderful views out onto Trajan's Forum and other parts of the Via dei Fori Imperiali. All right, the next site I want to tell you about is the Domus Aurea. The Domus Aurea means golden house. This was Nero's golden house. Nero was an emperor. He was one of the first five emperors, and he built this enormous villa that took up three of the seven hills of Rome. I absolutely love visiting the Domus Aurea. It is an active archaeological site. They're constantly excavating it and, sorry, there's a lot of wind here. Uh, and every time I go, I see something new. You will see huge structures, intact, fres um, intact frescoes, mosaics. They also have a room where you will put on these goggles and experience virtual reality. It will bring you back to what the villa probably looked like. It's it's so realistic. It's incredible. And one of my favorite things is the octagonal room, which is a round room with an oculus in the ceiling, and it's a precursor to the Pantheon, so it's pretty astounding. And although there are many, many more sites that you can visit in Rome where you can see ancient Rome, the last place I want to tell you about to keep this short is the Parco degli Acquedotti. This means the Park of the Aqueducts. In ancient Rome, 11 aqueducts brought water into Rome. And you can see them in Rome when you're walking around. They're here near the Roman Forum in the Palatine Hill and in other parts of Rome. But this park is a park and you can go there and see these structures that are just amazing. They're huge. They're still really intact. Uh, one or two of them are still actually bringing water into Rome. It's pretty amazing. So what do you think? Did you enjoy this list of ancient Roman ruins that are not the Colosseum? Have you visited any of these sites? Do you plan to? Do you have some sites that I didn't talk about that you want me to talk about? Drop me a comment below. I hope you've enjoyed this video about ancient Roman ruins you can see besides the Colosseum. Don't forget to check out my playlist with lots more videos all about ancient Rome.